Okay, so the learning goal here is uh, to talk about inverse functions, know how to find an inverse function and, and what it's actually going to be used for. Right, so over the course of the next couple of videos, we'll be discussing that. So let's start off with just the definition. Here's what the inverse of a function is. Okay? And the inverse of a, of a function, uh, we could look at as uh, starting with the equation, starting with the graph, starting with the relation, which remember a relation is just the table of values or an ordered pair, some way of describing a set of inputs and outputs. Right? So we're going to take those items, however we represent it, and we are literally going to switch the domain and the range. Invert means to switch, right? To, to switch sides, right? So when we're talking about inverting, we're going to take the domain and the range values, or whatever we're using to represent the domain and the range, like for example x and f of x, that represents domain and range, and we're going to switch those things, okay? And then we're going to kind of, we might do something with it, or we might graph it, or, or whatever, but the, the big idea is we're going to take the, the domain and the range, and we're going to switch their positions, okay? So I have a couple of key notes in here before we move on, and we actually algebraically figure out what, uh, what the inverse is. The first one is that after we do an inverse, the new function, which we call the inverse, um, may not be a function. So we might start with a function, right? If you remember, a function was something where every input has only one output, right? So it's possible that we might take an inverse and the new function might not be a function anymore and we might have to, to deal with that in some way. So that's an important note to make. Okay, the other important note to make is the way that we talk about it in just algebra notation, okay? If we call some function f of x, okay, we're gonna call its inverse f with a little negative one subscript. So that is not an exponent. It's not like f to the negative one power. The negative one is used to represent inverses. Okay, so if you see f to the negative one, right, we're actually saying f inverse of x. So you'll hear me describing functions that look like that as f inverse. Okay, so what we're going to do in this video, uh, now that we know what a, a, the inverse of a function is, is we're going to look at some algebraic expressions. Right? These are functions, 3x minus 5, 6x squared plus 4, and we are going to determine what the inverse is, which means I'm going to give you a new algebra statement that I'm claiming is the inverse. So let's, uh, let's check out some of these problems. Okay, so I'm telling you in the first problem, I'm sorry, in the red up top, before we get to the first problem, that if you want to find the inverse of a inverse of a function algebraically, which means if I want to take an algebra statement and find the inverse, which is another algebra statement, that if we switch the x and the y and then resolve the problem for y, that new function that we get after we do all of the solving, that's going to be the inverse of what we started with. Okay, so if you take a look at the first example, you'll see very quickly what I mean. Okay, so remember that f of x is a way of saying output values. Another way of saying f of x is to say y. So in any of these problems, if you see the function notation, you can also replace it with y. It's a little bit easier to talk about x and y instead of x and f of x. So we're, we'll, we'll make that change, okay? So what we set up top was switch x and y. So we're going to do that. We're going to come to our problem and we're going to say x equals 3y minus 5. So I've literally switched the domain and the range. I put the range in the domain's position and vice versa. And then the second part of this is now resolve it for y, right? Get it to say y equals again. So to do that, I would have to add 5 over. And it would say x plus 5 is equal to 3y, right? And then I would need to divide by 3. And we can represent this a couple of different ways. We could represent it as uh, x plus 5 over 3, okay? And that's y. Or we could represent it um, just by simplifying the parts. Remember, this is a 1. So I could say 1 third x plus 5 thirds. And that's another way of writing it, and that equals y. Whichever way you want to write it, they're both okay. They both mean the same thing, right? So what I'm going to claim is that whichever one of these you use, this is the inverse of f, which we'd write as f inverse of x. Again, whichever version you want to use. So all I did was I'm saying this new expression, which I'll just stick with the first one here, this new expression right here is the inverse, right? I switched x and y. I resolved it for y. Okay, so let's take a look at a couple other other examples. This second one again. I'm just going to just cross it off right here, and I'm going to say this is the same as y equals. So I'm going to do the switch. So it's now it's going to say x equals, and I'm going to put the y inside the radical now. So it'd be 2y plus 5. Okay, so if I wanted to get y by itself here, the first thing I need to do is to square both sides, and that removes the radical. Right, squares and square roots are opposite operations; they'll cancel each other out. So now this says x squared is equal to no more radical, 
to y plus 5. Okay. Now I can start getting y alone. Let's subtract this 5 over x squared minus 5 is equal to 2y. And again, you got options here. When you divide by this 2, let's show it the other way this time. If this is a 1, I'm going to say that is 1 divided by 2, which is 1 half x squared, and 5 divided by 2 is 5 halves. Right. So again, that's the option. And I'm going to, not going to write y. I'm going to write what this actually represents now. It represents f inverse of x. Okay. So I would say this right here is my inverse function, which again, if you wrote it as x squared minus 5 over 2, that's fine. It means the same thing. Okay. One more example. All right. So we're going to take x and y again. Remember, this is really y. All right. So I'm going to take the y and put it in the x spot. Right. We're going to say uh, y is e I'm sorry, x is equal to 6y squared plus 4. And let's get y alone. So I'm going to subtract the 4. Okay. So that's going to be uh, x minus 4 equals 6y squared. Okay. And I'm going to divide both sides by 6. So it's going to say 1 sixth x uh, minus 4 sixths, which we can simplify that as we go. That's going to be 2 thirds. That equals y squared. Okay. And then to get y alone, I'm going to square root both sides. Right. This is a big square root, and so is this. Right. And so I'm going to say now it looks like y is equal to the square root of, okay, or plus or minus the square root of, 1 sixth x, and again, we'll simplify that. That's minus 2 thirds. Okay? So again, if I want to get rid of the y because I've used it, it served its purpose, let's go back to the notation that they started us with. This is f inverse of x. Right? This represents my function. Right? That is the answer to the problem. And just to be, in case you're wondering, plus or minus has to be there because I took a square root on both sides. And remember, when I take, whenever I initiate and I decide to perform a square root, and I bring that into the problem as something brand new, I have to include the plus or minus at the beginning. Right? So in each of these cases, I'm claiming that by switching x and y and resolving it for y, that I'm coming up with the inverse of these functions. So if you notice, just as a, looking at the really simple one, if I look at this expression right here, um, I'm basically saying this had a minus 5, my new one has a plus 5. Right? This one has a times 3, my new one has a divided by 3. So I'm actually doing the opposite operations, and that's going to be really important to take a look at later. And again, if I, it depends on, on the form. If I look at this one, it's tough to see that this is times 2, this is times a half. That's the same thing, right? So it's tough to see when I, we simplify it in this form. But in this form over here, I could definitely see that I'm performing all the opposite operations. Plus and minus are opposite with the 5. Dividing by 3 and multiplying by 3 are opposite with the 5. So they're actually entirely opposite expressions. Um, they do all opposite things. And that's one of the big ideas about inverses. Okay? So we're going to stop there. That is uh, algebraically finding the inverse of a function. We're going to look at, uh, in a little bit, graphing and, and a couple other things.